Trump tried to play the hero and backfired in his face. I'll let Chris Cuomo explain. I'll tell you, this is a very bad situation that the president is creating right now. And I think he's doing it to look good. Uh, but it's about the rest of us. And here's the news, okay? It took almost to the end of this tantrum of a presidency, but we now have a moment for this president, an ultimate moment of put up or shut up about being a champion for the American people, okay? The president has just put out a video statement saying he may not sign the relief bill. There are two big wants that he has, but the one that matters most is that he says he wants the checks to you to be made bigger. Now, this is something you can't just say. It is not about talking the talk because every moment you delay, people suffer. You must walk the walk. The Democrats, as you know, always wanted more money in the checks. It is his party and frankly, Trump's own staff that bargained down the eventual amount. Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, Democrat obviously, seized on this truth and issued the challenge that will define the final days of Trump's presidency in terms of what he does for you. Here's her statement, a tweet. Republicans repeatedly refused to say what amount the president wanted for direct checks. At last, the president has agreed to $2,000. Democrats are ready to bring this to the floor this week by unanimous consent. Let's do it. Mr. President, are you ready to walk the walk for the American people? This is a thing that they need more than anything else at a time that they need it more than any other time. It would be a damnable thing to, de to delay relief the way you are right now by not signing and force millions of Americans to suffer, to starve all through the holidays and into the new year if you don't deliver. And this would be a simple task. Get the Retrumplicans in line. They must do as you say. And ordinarily, I wouldn't argue that. I'd say, sure, you're the president, but the party's got its... But that's not the way it works with you, and you know it. You've gotten them to swallow so much worse. This will do good for people. You've gotten them to be silent, or even more importantly, complicit about your election canard. And even you know that's what it is. Even you are surprised at how gullible they have been. It's part of your frustration. I hear what you're saying. I hear that you're saying, I don't get it. They'll say whatever I want them to say. How come I can't do anything here? Well, I can't help you on the election because that's about the Constitution and the law. But this is about you and your will. Get your party to face the truth about the need in this country. They have no problem swallowing lies. Get them to own the truth. This is your moment. This is what will be the ultimate capstone. Are you a deal maker or just a con? Here's the president's position. If certain items that he thinks are part of the relief bill but aren't, there's an omnibus spending bill that was attached, right? I don't like it either. I think they should have been just relief and they should have gotten it done a long time ago. But again, you got to expect better and demand more from Congress if you want this kind of culture to change. In the attached spending bill, there's certain items that he sees as wasteful. Interestingly, and for me, really foreboding of a bad outcome here. He wants the three martini lunch extended even longer. So is he really about wasteful things when that's about as wasteful as anything in the bill, except for that wall spending they put in in the middle of a pandemic? Now, here's the thing. Why should we question whether or not he's going to do anything rather than just talk? Months of inaction. All that negotiating was going on. He wanted no part of it. He either watched passively, as Pelosi said, and all reporting points in the same direction. The Republicans wouldn't even say what the president wanted. They didn't even want him to have any role in this. He sat passively or completely ignored it. Now he's saying checks should be 2,000, not 600. Everything points to this being something where he gets to look good 
as others will truly suffer. People absolutely could use more money. And it was on him to fight for that. But when the fight was happening, not after it has been decided, this is not swooping in at the last minute. This isn't picking up the ball on the one yard line. This is a delay of game. He has been told that this delay and any help that was going to come may not come for anybody by Christmas or New Year. And it could scuttle any chance of a deal anytime soon. Americans were supposed to start getting checks next week. You know, I'm trying to find new ways to tell you this all the time. I've never seen hunger in this country the way it is right now. I'm 50 years old. We haven't seen it since the Depression. It's one in six or seven of all of us in the richest country in the world. But depending on where you live, you got one in four, one in three children not getting adequate nutrition. And I'm not saying the type of food, I'm saying the amount of food. It is desperate out there. People are desperate for this money. And he is holding it hostage three days before Christmas. Let history remember, in the final days of Trump's presidency, he messed with good people. And if he doesn't deliver, that must be his legacy. Because I'll tell you what he did do. He took care of bad people. This pardon blitz is the worst we've seen. It's a new low. You can support Trump, but don't you dare ever call him a law and order president again. 20 pardons and commutations tonight for political allies and others, including two convicted in the Russia probe, three corrupt, disgraced GOP congressmen. Papadopoulos, remember him? He's just a liar. The former Trump campaign staffer lied to the FBI about his Russia contacts. Remember Alex Van Der Zwan, who was deported after pleading guilty to lying to investigators about his interactions with a person with ties to Russian intel? Former GOP Congressman Duncan Hunter. Look at this. I mean, this is the kind of stuff. You talk about draining the swamp, say hello to the alligators. Duncan Hunter was sentenced to 11 months for stealing campaign funds. He gets a pre-Christmas pardon. Former GOP Rep Chris Collins, sentenced to 26 months for insider trading, lying to investigators, and he was doing that trading while in Congress. He gets one, too. Why? They were some of his earliest backers. That's not law and order, and you know it. Trump commuted the sentence of former Republican Congressman Steve Stockman of Texas. He was about two years into a 10-year hitch, conspiring to take hundreds of thousands in donations meant for charity and voter education. Also pardoned, four Blackwater guards involved in a deadly shooting of Iraqi civilians. What does this mean? Now look, the pardons, that's about what Trump is about in terms of character or lack thereof. If you're good to him, nothing else matters. He's not about law and order. Know that. He just proved it to you. So Trump, are you going to give us the checks? The $2,000 checks? Or are you going to continue to let your boy Right, Moscow Mitch McConnell hold us up again. See Trump, you're in a you put yourself in this spot. Now it's now it's too way too late for you to dig yourself out of. Make up your mind, Trump. Time's running out. For you that is. CTP know the truth. God bless. Peace to the left, justice to the right. <laughs>